here we're going to work the opposite way, which is actually much more difficult, um, but it makes us realize that reading graphs isn't so bad. So instead of being given a graph and asked the limit, we're going to be given the limit and asked what the graph could be. And I think one of the things that makes this so difficult is that in math it's usually one answer, and here we're going to have a lot of answers. So let's just put that between these two examples down here, that there are lots of answers. When you go back and study this, this is not the end all and be all, whatever I draw here. I probably draw it different every time I draw these um, in a given class. So it's just because there's so many different answers that it feels really difficult because you don't really know if it's right. You have to go back and check that it just satisfies the following things. So we're just going to take it piece by piece and go really slowly. And then at the end, we're going to check that all the pieces end up being true. So the first thing that we're given is f of 0 has to equal 1. Well, that's not even a limit. What does that mean? That means if you plug in 0 for x, that you get 1 out for y. So this is just a point on the graph. This is the point 0 in the x gives 1 in the y. So I could draw that piece, first of all, f of 0 equals 1. And I would give partial credit on these, so there you have a point there. Um, just for doing that part. So don't get too overwhelmed. Lots of partial credit opportunities when drawing a graph. The second thing we have is f of 2 is undefined. So going back to algebra, if it's undefined, that means you plugged it in and it gave you an error on your calculator. And there's two reasons why you could have something being undefined. So there's two cases. So if plugging in some x value, f of x sub 1, just a specific x value, is undefined. There are two ways that you could draw that on a graph. So let's split up the two ways. One could be a whole, and one could be a vertical asthmatope, which I'm just going to write as VA normally. I'll spell it out for you just because it's our first time. It's a vertical asymptote. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. Crazy. Vertical asymptote. <laughs> That's why I normally write VA, but if you want to see how to spell it our first time, um, you can. So let's see what's sim the similar thing between these two and what's different. So again, let's reiterate that both are undefined. So that kind of crossed our line. Both we plug in are undefined, but they have a difference in what their limit looks like. So let's draw a hole in the graph. We saw some on the pictures before where they had just a hole in the graph. Okay, and what happens with that limit? So that's going to help us decipher between the two. So if I take the left hand limit and the right hand limit as I approach a hole, does that limit exist? Yes, we get to the same spot, so the limit exists. So this, the limit exists at our hole, because from the left and the right you get to the same number, and is just going to be some finite number. From the left and the right, they both go to y equals 6 or something like that. So the limit exists and it's finite. It's just a regular number. Negative 4, positive 6, something that we get to in the y value from both sides. Compared to a vertical asymptote, which can look a few different ways. A vertical asymptote, and we saw these in the graphs before, um, that's where our y value goes up or down without bound. So I can show you a graph with both of these on there. This is back to example one. Here's a hole in the graph. The limit exists as we approached one. It was one. Let me get that down here. And then we also have a vertical asymptote on this graph. It's where your y values are going crazy. So this one, the left-hand limit was infinity. The right-hand limit was negative infinity. The two-sided limit was d and e. So here's a hole an open circle, another hole, here's a vertical asymptote where it goes up or down, all crazy, and that was from example one. So a vertical asymptote can look that way. It can have one side be up while the other side is down. 
there's a vertical asymptote. Another kind could be where they're both going up to positive infinity or where they're both going down to negative infinity. A vertical asymptote has arrows going up or down to infinity. It makes you divide by zero and you get these crazy arrows instead of this open circle, which we'll explore why um, there's different things when you divide by zero, whether it's an open circle or a vertical asymptote in the next page. So, what would the limit be for these? By the way, this one could be flipped, it could be down and then up, and the limit would be the same thing, because what's the limit either way? The left-hand limit and the right-hand limit don't meet. One's down, the other's up. The limit for this vertical asymptote is D and E. One's going down and the other's going up. What about this vertical asymptote? For the left and the right, they're both going up, so the limit is positive infinity. Last vertical asymptote, if they both go down, the limit is negative infinity. So when you read that something is undefined, you're going to look at its limit and figure out should you draw a hole there because it's undefined at that x value but the limit is 4 or something like that. Then you're going to draw a hole if it's a finite number. Or if you see that the limit as you approach that place where it's undefined is does not exist, infinity or negative infinity, then you're going to draw a vertical asymptote there. So going back to this checklist here. Seeing that f of 2 is undefined doesn't help me so much with the picture, but it does narrow it down to two things. This is either going to be a hole, if the limit is finite, regular number, or it's going to be a vertical asymptote, if the limit is d and e or infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so it just narrows down. There's nothing for me to draw on the graph. It just narrows down what I can draw. So let's look at the next piece. The limit as x goes to 2 from the negative side. Here's a left-hand limit. The place where I'm undefined at f of 2, if I take the left-hand limit, because I can't plug it in, it gives me an error on my calculator, so I take the left-hand limit. I plug in something like 1.9, and I see what it gets me. This left-hand limit is going to infinity. So which should I draw? Should I draw a hole there or a vertical asymptote? If it's undefined and the limit is infinity, it must be a vertical asymptote. It could either be this one, where it's going infinity from the left, but negative infinity to the right, or it could be this one, where both are going to infinity. But it's definitely a vertical asymptote. It's not going to be a hole because the limit is not finite where it was undefined. So my left-hand limit is going to infinity. I'm just going to draw a little arrow going up or down if it's positive infinity. On the left, we're going up to positive infinity. So I'm going to go to 2, I'm going to go just to the left, and put a little up arrow to remind myself to satisfy that condition. It's a vertical asymptote, so you don't have to, but you can draw these dotted lines. I think it helps to draw these dotted lines, so you know kind of not to cross it. There's no specific y value there, so don't cross it. y is 5 or something like that. Make sure you just have an up arrow for that left-hand limit to be infinity. And then as x goes to 2 from the right side, it's going down to negative infinity. So it's going to look like this picture here, where it's up, then down, instead of that up, up. So my right-hand limit, the y value is negative infinity. That means we're going down. So I'm going to go just to the right of 2 and put a down arrow. Remind myself to make sure that holds true on my final graph. Last thing we're ever to do is connect these, because that's the hardest part. So I'm going to wait till the end to connect anything. The next thing I'm given is f of 3 is undefined. So again, I'm given a choice. If it's undefined, I have to either draw a hole to make sure it looks undefined, there's no colored in y value, or a vertical asymptote would be undefined because there's no colored in y value right above or below that x value either. And we're going to tell which one we want based upon the limit. So the limit as x goes to 3 is negative 1. So should I draw a hole? because the limit is negative 1, or should I draw a vertical asymptote because the limit's a negative 1? It's going to be a hole for this one, because we have a finite number as our limit. So we have a hole. It can't be a vertical asymptote because then the limit would be infinity, negative infinity, or d and e. So I'm going to draw a hole here. At x is 3, I want to approach negative 1. So at x is 3, I'm going to approach negative 1. So I'm going to put an open circle there so I make sure it's a hole. And then I'm just going to do like a little line to each side to remind myself that if the limit exists, I have to be able to follow in something. So I have to draw some sort of graph. 
So we've gone through all of these pieces. The last part is the hardest. We're just going to connect it. And the reason why I say this is the hardest is because you could do it a hundred different ways and they're all correct. So it's just a weird part of math where, hey, there's more than one correct answer. That doesn't always happen. So maybe I'll start on this left side. I have the point 0, 1 to incorporate on here. And I'm going to use this limit as x approaches 2 from the left to go up to infinity. So I'm just going to connect these two things. And I could leave it just like that. I could make it go kind of down and out nicely. Um, I could do something crazy, make it a parabola. There are tons of different answers. I'm going to make this one a parabola just for fun. As long as it goes through the point and has this left-hand limit of infinity, then I'm good. You can draw a ton of different ways off to that side. Same thing, I'm going to connect what I have over here. I have this right-hand limit going down to negative infinity, and I have to have a hole here at 3, negative 1 for that limit to be negative 1 and for it to be undefined. So I'm just going to connect these, and I could go super crazy with it, make it look like a cubic function, go way up on this side, um, but I think that's kind of hard, so I'm just going to go over put an arrow on it. There's tons of different answers. Remember we already wrote that at the bottom. So the last thing to do after you draw this graph where there's so many different possibilities is just to go back and make sure you didn't mess any piece up because sometimes like these holes will get colored in and then it's not undefined anymore. So we're just going to go back through and check that everything works. Did I go through the point zero, 1? Yes, I did. So I got those points on it. And this is exactly how I grade these as well. I just go each point and see if it's true on your paper. Is f of 2 undefined? If I look above 2, there's no colored in y value. It has to be a whole or vertical asymptote. This one is either a whole or vertical asymptote, so that part's good. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left side, I follow in from like 1 to 2. I'm going up to infinity, so that's perfect. From the right side of 2, I follow it. I go down to negative infinity, so that's good f of 3 is undefined, so I don't see a y value above or below 3. It's a hole, so that's good. It's definitely undefined if I have a hole there. And then as x approaches 3 from both sides, I have a two-sided limit. It has to be negative 1. So I'm going to go to the left of 3 and to the right of 3 slightly and follow it in, and the y value is negative 1. So there is a full credit answer. Look at the next graph. See if you can try to satisfy any of those pieces. Even if you can't figure out what each piece looks like, try to give yourself little arrows like I did or put points on there and see what you can get before opening the video.